All right, guys. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I make some of the cells. Uh, there's sample A, B, and C. If you notice, it's a, a uh, carbon paper. Well, it's not carbon paper. It's aluminum foil coated with carbon. So whatever. But the point is, this is this, this is plain, plain. Then this is uh, doped with a graphene ink that I got. Um, well, I made it, but long story. Anyway, and so what you do is you do that, and then these, this is the electrolyte. They both have the same exact amount of uh, electrolyte, uh, electrolyte or acid in it. Monk, she's over here laughing at me. Uh, he loves these videos when he does it because he says I sound like an asshole. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So they have the same amount, so we're dealing with the same things. <clears throat> and we weighed these all out, you know. And the reason why you weigh these out is because what you have to do is also uh, find out how much energy is stored relative to the individual amount of electrolyte. In other words, if you have five grams of electrolyte and you have one gram of electrolyte, you know, you're obviously going to be capable of storing more in the five grams. Uh, that's, just, that's just a fact. <clears throat> so... Then what I'll be doing is I'll be painting these on, and what I'll do is I'll paint one half, one half, and one half with just that, and then this one will get both just plain electrolyte. It's PVA and phosphoric acid, and then this is the integrated grid graphene in the PVA phosphoric acid as well. They're both the same amount, so it should be like basically this with that with graphene integrated into it. <clears throat> Not a big deal. So then what we'll do is we'll have, this is our, our uh, control. Ugh. Yes, I have to use scientific words today. Anyway, uh, this will be the control with both just the phosphoric acid on each side. That will be equated to normal battery construction even though there's, um, I don't have to use a separator because I'm going to let these dry uh, between all, all three of them. Uh, so that when I put them together, they they won't have to have uh, crosstalk, <clears throat> and that's also why I use the uh, I don't put both graphene on both sides it's because then you just have a, uh, a shunt. Uh, but anyway, the point is is then you do this to give you a control of what you would expect from the PVA phosphoric acid. Um, that way you know exactly what its performance is and it'll match up to literature. I've seen literature on this and stuff like that, so it, it just is what it is. It's not, it's not a very big deal. Then when you add this, okay, it'll be one side will be graphene integrated grid with phosphoric acid, uh, with the PVA phosphoric acid and phosphoric acid PVA plane on one side. <clears throat> and what that'll do That'll probably give us our normal charge results of much quicker, you know, 20 times faster or whatever, and a little bit higher energy densities. Um, but then with this, because this is going to be, and an example would be <coughs> what this does, is this makes the surface, let's see if I can do this while I'm writing, make the surface like this, and I'll put little flakes of graphene up so that the double or the pseudo Faraday effect or you know double layer system would happen on there in between those little layers that should give us the best result we'll find out um, when I splice this video <laughs> anyway so I'll get to painting and then the next one will be assembly of the batteries while they're apart after I paint them and it'll give you a better idea okay now that well, she's done calling me a, a weirdo and an axe murderer. <laughs> uh, I got it all painted. Okay, so obviously on this, this is one side is just the PVA, this PVA and phosphoric, and then this is the PVA phosphoric graphene. This is PVA phosphoric, PVA phosphoric graphene, PVA phosphoric, PVA phosphoric. And remember that this one had the ink on it already to pro provide the little fingers that go into the electrolyte. This is just plain, uh, well, plain integrated 
and this is the other. This is just a plain cell. This is how every cell is basically made, except for the fact that they have a uh, separator in there. So I'm going to let these dry in the oven, and when they dry out just a little bit, they'll form a little layer on, on the top so that I can squish them together and they won't ground out, basically, because that's what happens every time with these little cells because they're just, I'm just not Mr. Battery Manufacturer. Uh, just, that's just a fact. Sorry, guys. Uh, then we'll weigh them out so that we'll know exactly how much they weigh before we post how much energy they store or whatever. Uh, and hopefully we can get potential stat data on this because that's the real good stuff. That's, that's where you get charge rates, and, you know, all the, the good data. And there you go. Okay. Now you get results. All right. So you put one leg, one leg down. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. One leg down, right here. And this will be for the regular. Uh, this is the regular electrolyte. Oh come on. Stop being a pain. About 51. Well, there's so much glare. Oh, there we go. About 51 ultraferrets. Integrated grid will peg out. But hold on, you'll get one, and it should be around 15. So now I put a separator in there because it's just not working without a separator. And I had. There you go. That's with the fingers. <laughs> That's a bad read, but still quite impressive compared to this is standard. Twenty, and then if I can get it to not ground out. Well, there it was like eight thousand. Quite a bit of change. And this is just a capacitor. 8,000 ultrafarads with something a little bit bigger than a post-it stamp. And literally that thick. Look at that. I, I'm such a terrible builder of batteries that they're falling apart as we speak. Let's see if I can get something out of this. There's 1,000. This is reverse. And it's up and down because literally you're going to get pockets of capacitance because of the fact that I, I'm a crappy builder. This is the other one. Well, I had quite a bit out of that one. And then obviously this is pretty solid. Um, so either I have to figure out a way to make it. You know, Any battery producer can probably figure out that uh, the problem here is that there's a grounding, there's an arcing. Here is a drawing of it right here. Do, 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 do. Where is my pencil? Ah, here's the pen. All right. So, and they all have about the same amount of electrolyte. That was the other thing. Um, what'll happen is between the two plates, you have this. Here's a separator. All right. Uh, it's hard to do this while staring. The separator prevents direct contact of this plate with this plate. What happens though, anyway, because I'm such a bad person, is that like that, and then like this will happen, and you get a ground out, and, and that causes, you know, obviously shorts and not a good reading. Or you'll get the overload reading. I have a, well, I had them, my little desk. Now that's a lot of graphene, that's a lot of others, those are lithium ions. Well, I had some uh, 10 farad, well, those are the old capacitors that I made that I rebuilt. Those are all the old ones, if you guys remember those from other videos. In fact, there's that copper one that burnt up. Kind of neat. Anyway, history of Nick's research, all in a drawer. Um, but I have them somewhere. Anyway, 